Hey guys, I'm um, going to be showing off a new tool that I made with the help of some people and a lot of people have requested this feature for quite some time now and we finally got around to doing it and also adding some extra goodies for the tool and so what this tool does is it mimics the uh, Redshift photographic exposure inside of Nuke. So if you just install this tool you can get it off of my patreon um, I'll have the link below or you could look for it in the Redshift forums as I'll be posting it there also and we're in talks with the Redshift devs to hopefully package this up as its own little tool so when you guys install Redshift it'll come in the installation folder and you guys could use it for Nuke. Um, I do not know Fusion um, if someone out there does know Fusion well and knows how to write their own tools, you know, get in contact with me or the Redshift team, and hopefully someone can convert these to work with Fusion. Um, but yeah, so I have it already installed. It's a little Nuke gizmo. Just type in Reg RS Tone Mappers, and so what this node does, you just snap it in here. As you can tell, it already changed things. It's uh, in version 1.2, and it gives you a couple different tone mapping methods. The first being the standard Redshift photographic exposure, which is based around the Reinhard tone mapping method. And you get the usual settings that you have inside of Redshift ISO, f-stop, the uh, shutter ratio, things like that, right? and you get the white point so you can color pick or, or edit it yourselves and you get a saturation slider so if you adjust any of these things you get those controls so you could type in I don't know an ISO of 250 obviously it brightens the image you could slide the f-stop down a couple stops up a couple stops and it does that same thing with the shutter ratio, it increases or decreases the brightness, the white point I just explained, and the saturation. We also have the enable vignetting option. So if we increase the vignette, you can turn it on or off, and so on. Now what's cool is these are just the film settings. So these are universal for all the different tone mapping methods we have here and so if you click up here on the tone mapping method we have the redshift tone mapping method we have filmic tone mapping we have exponential luma tone mapping which is similar to uh, moto's tone mapping and then we have or maxwell and moto and then we have highlight compression which is similar to corona's um, highlight compression tone mapping and so to give credit where credit is due um, like i said i i modified and built on top of several of these other exp um, tone mapping methods which were created by other people so credit where credit's due I'm gonna give it to Simon Lundberg he's actually in the Redshift forums now um, Martin Guppel I think I'm pronouncing that right if I'm not sorry <laughs> and John H H Habel's work since he worked on the filmic tone mapping method and our local Redshift member Adrian Cusero and so he worked on modifying the uh, Redshift photographic and bringing it into Nuke. And so I kind of just stripped it down, gave us some simple to use settings and put it all together um, for people that have been requesting for filmic and, and other methods besides just the Redshift photographic. And so what's cool is you could use these uh, options, the F stops and stuff and the white point with any of these other methods. And so when you select one of these methods, you come down here and we have other controls. So we, before I talk about the uh, tone mapping controls, we have the camera angle and the candela meter squared. Just leave this by default. Nine times out of ten, this is fine. But in case you modified your scenes um, candela squared, then you know adjust it here. And we have the usual mix, so you can mix the effect if you need to get a little extra finessing on the effect. So when you click on one of these options, we have our usual Redshift photographic options. We have allow overexposure, desaturation, how much 
saturation or desaturation. So this is kind of cool. You could control that. Um, the allowed overexposure, the black crush, and the black crush amount. So we could increase the allowed overexposure. We could black crush further, adjust the threshold of where the black crushing occurs, and so on. So pretty neat. And if we come on over to Filmic, we get the usual filmic controls. So we got the shoulder strength of the curve. The uh, contrast, I guess you could look at it that way, the linear strength of the curve. The linear angle, steeper or narrower or shallower, I should say. And the toe strength, which increases or decreases the toe curve of the filmic curve, the S curve. And so, pretty cool. And like I mentioned, all these settings up here work with it just fine. So you could desaturate and so on. And then we also have the exponential luma. Now, that's not a setting here. And the reason is because it's it just works with the, the scene's f-stops. So you don't really do anything. You just kind of activate it and you increase the um, f-stops and that's it there's no, no 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 other controls for it and finally we have highlight compression which we can control down here clicking on that and so this lets you control how much of the highlights are we compressing or not compressing and so this is a similar method to uh, Corona's highlight compression basically if you guys are used to that and highlight compression you can think of as the opposite in in a way as the overexposure allowed overexposure and redshift it's similar it's just uh opposites kind of and so yeah that gives you a couple controls to further tone map your linear renders once you're um done so if you need to match the redshift settings inside of your render view you could use this to control that or if you need different types of tone mapping. So we've got the filmic and highlight compression methods. And so we could just, let's check out what this looks like here. So you can see here on this um, example, this Cornell box, you can see kind of what's going on pretty easily. If we come in here, F stops, the uh, right now we're on highlight compression so we could come up here and compress the highlights we could switch on over to filmic and we can adjust the, the linear strength which kind of you can think of this as like a form of contrast and bring these down And you can see how quickly you can get some nice tone map results. And of course, you could always come up here, adjust saturation and whatnot, and the, the vignette if needed. So pretty cool. Pretty neat um, tool that's useful, I think. What's great about this is, you know, you guys could use this in photos or other render engines if needed. It's pretty universal. It just tone maps your linear renders. And that's about it. I think that covers kind of just what what this does, how to use it, and yeah, cool. So again, uh, like I mentioned, we're gonna try to get this packaged with Redshift and get it to out to everybody. All these. Um, Tone mapping methods, they, they're, they're out there on the internet um, just to be converted into tools. So hopefully you guys, someone out there can pick this up and maybe make one for Fusion using all these, these options here. And like I mentioned, please get in contact with the devs or 
or contact me and I'll put you in contact with them and we can get you all the info if you need need this type of information so you guys can build your own fusion node and hopefully share it with us to share with the rest of the community um, for now yeah I just download it from my patreon I'll link it below and yeah so a pretty useful tool for everybody that the community has been asking for for a while and we finally got around to getting it finished enough that we feel that we can send it out for everybody to to explore and try out themselves so thanks again guys um thanks for all the support on patreon i really appreciate it um thanks for all the the views and likes on on youtube hopefully you know we can keep making more cool shaders and tools like this for the community and everybody you know gets gets to get these these tools in their hands so that they they could uh explore them themselves um, but yeah, thanks again, guys.